Hello, hello, happy new year to everyone. Welcome back. My name is Chris. It is, what day is it? It is Wednesday, it's Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. That's right, we all made it to 23. We are killing it. It is crazy to think that it has been three years almost since the uh, whole COVID-19. I don't know about you guys, but I keep thinking about that. But nonetheless, we're back here, Seller Chats, here at the Second Glass, and we are kicking off the first week of business here at Second Glass with a very fun flight of something that I think we are all very familiar with, we've all heard it, but I don't know how often people really drink it anymore, and that is Bordeaux. Long celebrated, but rarely rarely really, you know, enjoy it. You know, we talk about it, you hear about it, people collect it, they spend lots and lots of money on it, but I don't know a lot of people who drink Bordeaux regularly. So why not kick off the year with something not obscure, but definitely maybe new or you need to be reintroduced to. So we're gonna start out with Chateau Respied Medvie. This is their Grave Blanc. So Grave um, on the left bank, most notably known for their white wines, although they do produce some really excellent red wines, but it is probably the most famous white wine producing area of Bordeaux. That will be really, really fun, something a little different. Moving into a left bank, so Bordeaux, just real quick, Bordeaux is always referred to as left bank and right bank. We're talking about the left and right banks of the river that runs through Bordeaux. This is Cru Montpliceur. Um, they are located just south of the, of the commune of Margot, so on the left bank. And then we're popping over to the right bank for some saint Emilion from Chateau Tessier which should be really lovely. So let's get into it. Um, you know, Bordeaux is kind of really where it all started for so many people in the wine world, at least, you know, the ones that kind of established what we know as the wine trade and the wine, you know, basically Napa is built on the idea of trying to compete with Bordeaux. So the famous, the famousness and the ridiculousness of Cabernet Sauvignon throughout Napa is all inspired by Bordeaux. But something that I think to this day, whenever I do a tasting, people don't quite realize is that Bordeaux produces white wine. They actually produce really great white wines. Um, they just don't make a lot of it. So again, this is Chateau Respied Medvie, um, their Grave Blanc. So the main great varieties in Bordeaux for white wine are Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon, and a little bit of Muscadel. Um, this is prime, this is 50% uh, Semillon and then mostly Sauvignon Blanc with just a touch of the Muscadel. And these are also the grape varieties that you'll find in Sauterne, which is the very famous um, dessert wine, another category that people really don't enjoy anymore, which is a shame because they are incredible. It's that whole negative connotation with things that are sweet. That's a whole other conversation for us to have. Um, but again, so... For white Bordeaux, you, again, it's that, typically it's Semillon Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and for those of you who really love, you know, Sancerre's and light, crisp, fresh Sauvignon Blancs, this is not necessarily going to be that. These, generally speaking, are aged in barrel, oftentimes new oak barrels. You've got a lot more texture, a lot more rounded fruits to it, a lot more complexity and secondary flavors. It's not all about that citrus mineral. This is more of Again, white Bordeaux, like red Bordeaux, is really about nuance, earthiness, structure, and being a little bit heftier. Again, if you're not entirely familiar where Bordeaux is, we're basically on the little bit south, but kind of central, south, south, central, west side of France, and we're near the Atlantic, and it's quite cold here. You know, you've got a lot of influence from the cold Atlantic Ocean, which makes, you know, makes it a rather, I wouldn't call it, so what I'm looking for, not a robust place to live, but it's not exactly like the most ideal place, particularly like in the winter time, very cold, very wet. Right off the bat, the nose, um, for those of you who are not familiar with Simeon, Simeon has a lot of like honeyed, white flower, jasmine kind of characteristics to it, and this wine just kind of screams that on the nose. Um, you know, fermented in stainless steel, aged six months in new oak. So I definitely expect there to be some oak kind of like toastiness, maybe a little bit of spice on the palate. You know, on the nose, outside of like 
feeling a little warm and textured. It doesn't necessarily seem like oaky in any way, shape, or form. Mm. Wow. Again, as, as the title suggests, long celebrated, but definitely not, you know, of the moment. I rarely drink Bordeaux, um, white Bordeaux or red Bordeaux. It's not, it's not that they're not good. It's just, I don't go, I don't go looking for that. So it's been a long time since I had a white Bordeaux and this is really showing quite lovely. This is a 2017 vintage, um, which I think the 18 is maybe the current vintage on the market, uh, but 17, you know, it just kind of hit the market. And this is in a great place. And the other thing that I think Bordeaux and white Bordeaux particularly does is it really showcases ageability in white wine. White Bordeaux kind of needs some time, you know, that new oak influence. It's a lot more textured. Semillon can be a little bit funky and musky, um, but this has really come together quite beautifully and it is in a great spot. Mm. Again, that is Chateau Recipe Medvi, um, which is one of several holdings under the Gonet Medvi family. So you have Xavier Gonet and Julia Medvi, um, two you know young people, young people, <laughs> two two young industry people who grew up in winemaking families and they found each other and got married and basically have connected their wine sort of empire for lack of a better term. They own a handful of different estates and domains throughout primarily like Southwestern uh, France. They've got a, an amazing champagne house. They've got several estates in Bordeaux and then they also make some really great um, Sauterne under their Chateau Gillette, which is a very, very incredible, really old school um, Sauterne producer that gets overlooked. But anyways, as part of their portfolio, they do Chateau Recipe Medvi, and then they also do this one, the Cru Mon Pleaser. Uh, I did not pick these specifically because they were matched together. It just so happened that this fit what we were trying to do this week. So this property, Cru Mon Pleaser, uh, is kind of a gathering of a couple of vineyard parcels <clears throat> just outside of the appellation of, Mar of Margot. So we're on the left bank. So we're in uh, Cabernet dominant, generally speaking. So when we're talking red wines in Bordeaux, we're talking, like I said, left bank, right bank. Left bank tends to be Cabernet Sauvignon dominant. Again, we're generalizing here. Right bank is usually Merlot or Cab Franc dominant, but more often than not, it is Merlot dominant. What makes this kind of interesting, a couple things actually. One, it is Merlot dominant. It's about 75% Merlot, um, 20 or so percent Cabernet Sauvignon, and the remainder Cab Franc. Um, but where these parcels are situated, they are actually right up against the really famous and quite delicious wines of Chateau, like vineyards for Chateau Margaux and Chateau Disson two very widely heralded uh, Margot producers. So the terroir is quite lovely, although it sits outside of the Margot Appalachian. Um, and it's just a really, really cool wine to do a Merlot dominant wine from the left bank. And really that has a lot to do with soils. Um, on the left bank, you've got a lot more gravelly soils, um, less, less kind of like clay. So you have a bit more loose soils, which Cabernet Sauvignon does really good in well-draining soils. Merlot, generally speaking, needs a little higher level of clay. They need those uh, water-retaining soils. But here, you've got mostly gravel with some clay, which is why, Cab why Merlot has a much heavier hand here. Um, straight up, I mean, this is... What I've always liked about this wine is that it really showcases the really classic, traditional qualities of Bordeaux in a way that is very approachable. It's kind of little cassis, blackberry. There's definitely like a um, like a granite, like not a flinty characteristic, but there's a like mineral quality to these. Gravelly, I guess you could say. A lot of people do say. Good structure. This wine is done entire, almost entirely in stainless steel. It only sees about 10% oak. So it is made in a way that's meant to be drinkable upon release. Again, we're, it's Merlot, Cabernet, <clears throat> Cab Franc, and it comes from gravelly and clay soil, so it's just a little softer textured and up front. It's not necessarily a wine for aging, although you could age it. Mm. 
Oh, wow. Such a lovely wine. Wow. It's been a minute since I had that. Um, great texture. Really beautiful. Again, more of that cassis kind of plummy blackberry fruit. A little bit of floral. You get a little, just a touch of like that kind of rich, sweet oak flavor. It's not a lot, but it's just on the back end there. Kind of like amps up the sweet fruit. Really pretty entry level into Bordeaux and a great kind of transition. Transition, You know, what I wanted to do originally when we were putting this together is that I wanted to do a Cabernet Sauvignon based like driven wine and a Merlot based one. Well, that just didn't work out for us. But I was able to do left bank, right bank. Um, and the really big difference here is the, sto the soils. <clears throat> so you've got primarily gravel with some clay on the left bank, and you've got primarily clay with some limestone on the right bank. Generally speaking, again, somebody, there's pockets of all kinds of stuff everywhere. But this wine is, wow, it is so pretty. And it's the perfect thing. I mean, it is not, I think it's pushing 60 for this weekend and this week. It's not necessarily like freezing outside, but it's pretty cool at night. It's dropping down into the 30s. So this is a nice little like kind of warm your body, warm your, warm your soul flight we got going on. Mm. So again, that is Cru Monthly Sir. It is a Bordeaux Superior. And that is the 2020 vintage. Now we're moving on to saint -Emilion. This is Chateau Tessier. So Centimillion really kind of became a bit of the darling of Bordeaux, I'd say, in the in the Robert Parker days when he kind of fell in love with the the lovely right bank garagistas, which basically were just producers that made such small quantities of wine they could make it in the garage, and in some cases some did. Um, and what drew him here is the same thing that I think draws anybody to right bank Bordeaux is that they tend to be a lot of them are Merlot dominant, and what Merlot does that really well that Cabernet Sauvignon isn't always as good at is that sorry these sometimes just so you know wine professionals also have trouble with foils um these old school very like heavy aluminum foils are annoying um anyways back to the focus of our of our uh, chat today the one thing that Merlot does that Cabernet Sauvignon really struggles to do outside of um, really warm places like Napa is that there's a lot more plushness and upfront, like not juicy, but just pleasurable fruit. Cabernet Sauvignon can be very austere is a fancy word for saying kind of harsh. Um, it can be really tannic. The fruit can be kind of subdued. It's a little hard to get into. It needs time to really soften up. Whereas Merlot as a whole is a little less tannic of a grape. Um, it tends to really showcase more plummy kind of, not, yeah, jammy, plummy jammy fruit up front, regardless of where it grows. Now in a place like Bordeaux, where it's fairly cool, you're gonna get a little bit more classic structured styles that aren't so fruit forward, but it's just, it's still softer than Cabernet Sauvignon. So, <laughs> long, long diet drop there. The right bank really became popular as people were really looking to just drink wine now. They didn't want to wait 25, 30 years for a wine to be drinkable. They wanted to drink wine now and Merlot really gave people and producers and consumers the answer to, I want to drink great wines from great places, but I don't want to wait 25 years. So hence, that's where Centimillion and some of the other places like Pomerol really became, you know, a focus of collectors and wine drinkers everywhere. Personally, I, if I was choosing Bordeaux to drink, I would prefer right bank over left bank. I just like the plushness of Merlot and I really like Capron. So on the nose, so this is a 2015 vintage. So this has got a little bit of bottle age on it, you know, going on uh, about seven, a little over seven years, probably, uh, probably about seven years in bottle. You're starting to see a little bit of that, like, Fade um, as a wine ages a bottle, you've got a little bit of more of that. Um, what am I looking for here? It's, um, what I would call a little bit like baked fruit characteristics. You know, it's still ripe, but you can see that it's kind of like moving into its prime. You're moving towards more secondary, tertiary, kind of earthy characteristics. The nose is very elegant, very, whereas the Cru Montplacer is a little bit more intense and plush. Up front, again, it's stainless steel and a little bit of oak. It's much young, much younger fruit vines. 
um, much younger wine in general, so it's got a little more intensity. This is a little more like elegant. I want to sit and enjoy this for a bit more. Mm. Oh, and it does that thing all, Mer all good Merlot does. It is just satiny silk on the palate. The fruit is so soft. Everything is really well integrated. You know, arguably this wine probably could age for another, you know, five, seven, maybe 10 more years, but it's drinking so beautifully right now. The tannins have softened up and they're very like, very velvety, which I find a super appealing quality in tannins. But again, a nice transition. Both of these are kind of Merlot dominant. This is actually about 85% Merlot with a little bit of Cab Franc, um, whereas the other one is about, what I said, 70% uh, Merlot. But texturally and aroma-wise, they are quite different. So come out, have the flight, try these wines, get reacquainted with Bordeaux or get acquainted with Bordeaux in general, um, and enjoy this and maybe fall in love with something new because it's chilly and these wines hit just right. So again, the recap this week, Chateau Respied Medvie, their Grave Blanc, mostly Semillon with Sauvignon Blanc and Muscadel, Cru Monkey Sur, Bordeaux Superior, about 75% Merlot, the remainder Cab Sauv, Cab Franc, and then Chateau Tessier's 2015 Saint Grand Cru, 85% Merlot, the remainder Cab Franc. Thank you for tuning in. Stay warm. Come out and support local business. Have a few glasses, have some great flights, have some good food, hang out with friends, and I'll see you all next week.